This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the X-Zone. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the X-Zone Broadcast Network and our family of growing affiliates right around this great big world of ours. And, of course, on iHeartRadio. If you'd like to send me an email, X-Zone at XZoneRadioTV.com on all social media sites, X-Zone Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you 24-7, 365 on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Chase Kletsky. Now, Chase earned her Master Trainer, Master Instructor title while employed with the Department of Defense. Armed with a biomechanical engineer accreditation, she was responsible for designing specialized programs and the supervision of complete success regarding force readiness, unique mission responsibilities, and elite force protection. She joined the Mutual uh, UFO Network in 1996 and was selected as the Star Team Manager and Deputy Director of Investigations through 2011. She was responsible for the program design protocols and investigation procedures for a National Rapid Response Unit. This position included supervision of the most experienced investigators and access to the most sensitive and complex cases reported to MUFON. As of today, Chase had... Chase leads the special assignment team of experienced and specialized investigators in MUFON, responding to the reports that need, specific, that need specific and thorough attention. As an international CAG investigator, Chase focuses her attention on national UFO cases reported in Mexico, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Central America. Joining me this hour is Chase Kletsky. And Chase, thank you and welcome to the X-Zone. I am so happy to be with you, Rob. I've been looking forward to this all week. Oh, well, I have too, Chase, because uh, number one, I, I had the pleasure of, of working with you and Kevin when you did his show a number of months ago. And um, the the field of ufology has taken a number of hits recently. Yes. And, you know, I, I'm so glad that you're with us with your credentials to help me spread the information to our audience about the importance of properly investigating UFOs, that just because you go online and you read a little bit about UFOs does not make you an investigator. And we also need to to tell our listeners about the importance that MUFON plays in society. It's really interesting. I love the, um, you know, sometimes the people that claim to be investigators mm-hmm. have never left their house. And you're absolutely right. This is this is not what we would consider an investigation, um, you know, attribute at all. Uh, that would be more researcher, you know, we, archivist. We have a lot of other things that can be done in the UFO field. But when you're an investigator, you really have to take responsibility for that title. And, Rob, the, probably the main reason is who else are these people 
that literally see something that's not supposed to exist, who else are they going to call? Exactly. We're all they have. So if we need to take responsibility and hone in our skills and really, um, you know, tighten up and be yeah. very, very good at what we do so we can offer them scientific and admissible um, findings in the end. Chase, I've got about a minute before I have to go to our first break. Um, how would you, in 30, uh, 60 seconds or less, how would you describe the importance that MUFON is playing in society today? I, it's it's a huge one. Um, first of all, since 1969, it's become the largest um, you know, UFO database and reporting site. Yes. And what separates MUFON from all the other databases is they have investigators. Every report is assigned an investigator. Mm -hmm. And these are trained investigators. And it's the only um, program I know where you can get kind of that fringe science investigator that has been vetted. They've been tested. They had to pass a certain amount of credibility. So, you know, there's a lot of benefits of um, using MUFON and partnering and joining MUFON. All right, Chase, please stand by. Exo Nation, our guest this hour is Chase Kletsky. Her website is www.chasekletsky.com, and that is C-H-A-S-E-K-L-O-E-T-Z-K-E.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Chase and I will be back on the other side of this break as we talk about UFOs and the importance of ufology and MUFON in today's society. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X-Zone. I am, yes, you know who I am. After 26 years of the show, you should know who I am by now. Rob McConnell, just in case you forgot. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. Chase uh, Kletsky is our special guest to this hour. We're talking about UFOs and MUFON this hour. Now, Chase, I've been doing this show for 26 years, and I remember when, when I first started way back then, UFOs were a hot topic. However, yes. when the Internet hit the homes, it went crazy when... The X-Files came on. It went crazy. It seems that everyone and his brother at one time or another saw a UFO. And and as an investigator and as a, a member of MUFON, how did you people differentiate between the person who had actually seen a UFO compared to the person who, based on the influence of the media and the Internet, believed they saw something that was a UFO. 
That's a great question. We have a lot of uh, training yeah. within MUFON. Now we we actually have MUFON University. It's online training. This is university level uh, curriculum, mm -hmm. and it's done a very in a very sophisticated way. And what I love about it being online is now it's in all languages. Wow! So we're not confined at all. So our international department. Uh, run by Dave McDonald and Chuck uh, Reaver, are, has just exploded. So this is one of the benefits, but this is really um, how we properly investigate, how we determine if they've really seen what they think they have or they believe they have uh, versus a misidentification, a hoax, or it is really starts with the interview and credibility of you know the facts the challenge questions. There's uh, several things we do in an interview. And then again, it's boots on the ground. Let's get out there and um, stand where they were standing. Let them point where they saw what they did and look for evidence. And that really is our objective is to perform a comprehensive investigation that only will only satisfy a scientific scrutiny. So it's a big task. It's it a big is. task for a lot of people that belong to the world's largest organization, which makes us also the biggest target. Something else that many people do not realize, Chase, is that all the members of MUFON who actually go out, do the investigation, do the follow-ups, do the paperwork, no matter what part of the organization except for the head office, volunteer. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple more paid positions in MUFON, but they're all, um, they need to be. I, I just love that, you know, MUFON, here's a UFO organization mm -hmm. that offers a little over 4,000 members and investigators around the world that'll go out and, and get the work done with a home office yeah. that is focused every day, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, on nothing but taking care of business. And... Um, this year, we've been rocked with a little, you know, sidetrack and mm -hmm. controversy, not with MUFON in general, but the field. And, um, you know, and then we just keep driving. It's been active, very active. Um, we're still getting anywhere between 900 and 1,100 reports a month. The UFO phenomena is a story that's not going away. It's, it's awesome. Let me ask you this, though, Chase. How close do you think based on your experience, both in and outside of MUFON, which, by, uh, which I must say is very impressive, and, and congratulations on everything that you've accomplished. Oh, thank you. How close is disclosure? I believe it's, it's imminent. I believe mm -hmm. we're standing on the tip of that pin as we speak, and I don't believe for a second it's going to come from the government. In other words, we're not going to have this big announcement. Right. Um, Quite frankly, I believe that they don't know any more than we do. Why would we tell the president? He doesn't have a need to know. They're temporary employees. And on goes mm -hmm. this, you know, segue that really sets up this great little, you know, conducive little compartment yeah. of the guys controlling um, this secret. But at the same time, with everybody looking, Rob, you know, everybody's looking. Sure. MIT, all our sciences, we've got independent mm -hmm. uh, researchers now, religious institutions with the Vatican, with their own telescopes. That's right. The world's most technologically advanced. Yeah. They're not looking down. They're looking at the stars, um, you know, and have come out in front of the ET issue. Even the Pope has. Everybody's looking for extraterrestrials. So the good news for us as investigators is, we're not so much the crazies around the corner anymore. Uh, we are being sought by really um, highly credentialed and sophisticated but, scientists. But and let's put the credit where the credit is due. It's because of people like you with your qualifications. Uh, I've had, over the, over the years, Chase, I've had people who are MUFON members that I would be the first one to sign their admittance papers into the loony bin. <laughs> You know, well, I, yes. you know, and, and then you had the the thing with John Ventry, uh, mm -hmm. not only this year, but a couple of years ago. And he said the reason why the Malaysian airline flight, what was it, 350 or whatever, w will never be found was because it was, a you know, it was abducted by an extra, by a UFO, know. you know, and it was like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, and I'll be very honest with you, Chase. 
there were times when I thought MUFON is, a, you know, like these guys have lost it. But right, right. The caliber, it, it, the if you'll excuse me, the caliber of members, and the professional people that are joining MUFON now, you are going to be a force to be reckoned with, in a good way. Thank you for that. I have to be honest, sometimes it's the people making those comments that get the most attention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there there's a lot of really um, highly educated people within MUFON yeah. that are working very diligently every day. You're not hearing from them because, you know, they've got their head down and they're working. And it just seems like we get these, you know, crazy statements. Yeah. You know, who wasn't cringing when you hear this stuff? And, of course, you know, that same member, you know, said a horrible statement and put it on Facebook yeah. and you know people were screaming for Jan Harzan to resign it's like wait a minute guys this is an international organization nobody is going to tolerate that type of yeah. racism and that type of you know disgusting comments but MUFON also is a legal organization that had to contact lawyers well, like mm -hmm. what's you know what's the best way to handle this because yeah. the guy's gone we know this we just have to do it right. Right. And, you know, but people were calling for all sorts of things. And it's, you know, no different than somebody in the Red Cross saying something on Facebook and everybody blaming the Red Cross. But it's, the nice part is, is that MUFON took care of it. And they thanks did. to members like yourself and Jen Harzen and the other members of the board of directors, MUFON is going forward and upward. Yeah, MUFON is evolving and, um, you know, being part of the staff, yep. um, you know, just hearing the things that are coming in 2018, it's like, yes, um, we're really, you know, driving forward. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I am convinced about is becoming a lobbyist and, you know, really work in the beat in D.C. I, um, I understand you recently registered as a UFO lobbyist. Officially registered as a UFO lobbyist. Congratulations. Thank you. It, it, it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> the whole lobby thing, going through the campaign finance offices. Oh, geez. But, um, you know, and we did it. I did it through um, a, a little investigation group that I have, which is just two of us, Carrie McClure and myself. But we, it's the field reports and it's the science and technology investigation group. Mm -hmm. No UFOs. No wording like that, no mothership talk or aliens um, really going after D.C. with the sophistication of what our data has presented from the witnesses that come forward. And these are going to be defined, um, you know, specifically yeah. as just unknown technology. And why can't we get those documents from 1971? Surely we're not using that same technology. Even your own records show that we're not. Can That's we right. have those files, please? So – you know, instead of bombarding D.C., because mm -hmm. we picketed the White House, we have petitioned the White House, we've had two citizens hearings on disclosure, and they're all great ideas, but we're still here. I so was what's going, our I was next step? You see, I was going to ask you about that, because, you know, I've had Stephen Bassett on the show a number of times. I've known Stephen ever since I started doing this show 26 years ago. Yeah. And... I can honestly say, and please don't take this the wrong way, that over the past 26 years that I've been actively involved behind this microphone, I have seen nothing change within ufology. Well, and then again it has. And it, it, you you have to be embedded in the work every day to really kind of filter this out. Mm. Because now what we see is that Chase Kletsky, because of his work, um, I'm now I'm now allowed to register as a lobbyist. Um, I, I am going to have those doors opened. Um, we had, if nothing else, this is what convinced me to get involved in the political arena. Mm -hmm. um, is watching the citizens hearing. We had those six, even though they're former. If anyone that knows how DC works knows that any one of them who sat on you know intelligence committees and de uh, Department of Defense committees, and you know did a lot of major, major uh, decision-making could call the president. If they think they have no influence, they're crazy. Of course they do. Um, How? I, um, because they can call the president. They have a history. Um, they know what happened back in the day, you know, 
uh, they sat on some of these committees. I, so okay. Once... All right. But let's let me. I, I'm sorry for interrupting you because uh, you know I, I've only got an hour to share with you, and I wish the heck was right, a right. lot more. Um, if these people who sit on these these committees, uh, these these things that Steve Bassett was good enough to put together, and they they had signed or taken an oath of secrecy, they break their oath of secrecy to to reveal this information. How can anybody take them seriously? Not all have. Um, a lot of them were very cautious about that. In fact, um, Senator Graval, uh, when Penniston and Burroughs, who are very conscientious about their security oaths, um, handed them a um, file, mm -hmm. he had to, he, he had to um, let somebody read it because he wasn't sure if he had the um, security clearance to read that information. Mm. That's the stuff we witnessed okay. at the citizens' hearing. It was amazing. But, but, but what, what I, I, what the, I, the biggest thing yeah. was watching these people on Monday mm -hmm. were being polite because they were very well paid. They were being polite. And by Wednesday, we have Kirkpatrick and Graval and the rest of them saying things like, yeah, I'd like to see those files too. And then it hit me, Rob, they're intelligent. If we present them the right information with the right tone and mindset, they're, of course they're going to get it. Of course they are. And I watched them by Friday completely understand this. But what happens if the information the UFO community thinks the government has isn't um, as hot and sizzling as the UFO community thinks it is? Look what happened yesterday when, you know, tons of of documentation from the JFK assassination were finally released. Not all, everything was released. Some of, you know, some of it was released and everybody thought the smoking gun would be there and it wasn't. I know. It's because some people have very high expectations of the honesty of Washington. I am not one of them. <laughs> and I can tell you that, uh, you know, I don't expect a lot. We're, we're going to have to push it. But you know, when it comes to advocacy, we can't ignore the scientists. There are so many people involved right now. All right, I hate to do looking. this. We've got to take our news break. Please stand by, Chase. Okay. Exonation. Chase Kletsky is our special guest. And if you'd like to find out more about Chase, chasekletsky.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break. And, of course, MUFON.org, I believe. Is that it? Is it com or org? Uh, dot com. Dot com. We'll be back. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All right, X-Zone Nation, let's get back to the show. We have a great guest this hour. Her name is Chase Kletsky. And uh, she is with MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. Now, for more information on Chase, her website is chasekletsky.com. And, of course, for MUFON, if you'd like more information or if you'd like to become a member of MUFON, www.mufon.com. I, I understand the importance of, of getting documentation. I fully understand and appreciate disclosure. And I wish you... I'm not even going to wish you luck because I know you're going to succeed as, as a lobbyist. Um, Thank I under, you. <laughs> I, I, I understand there's a new organization that has been formed by uh, uh, one or two former members of MUFON. Uh, Robert Powell is one of the organizers of the Scientific Coalition for UFOs. How is this going to affect MUFON? Um, I, I think there's room for everybody. Uh, Robert has contributed mm -hmm. really great great work and a lot of sincerity and integrity um, to the UFO field. And, you know, we wish them success. You know, th that's the greatest thing about the phenomena. And, yeah. you know, it's a small community. We need more and more people um, within MUFON 
you know, some of these losses hurt a little. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. Um, sure. You know, and starting their own group. But, you know, I look forward to, you know, seeing them again and working with them, running into them at, you know, at the field or conferences yep. where we can talk and, and get things done. Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, it is a very small community, but it's such a a large topic and i agree yeah. it, it needs more people serious people people who can can add to the credibility of the investigations that are going on i i, I would hate like heck to see mufon or any other organization that is seriously investigating the the ufo phenomenon to turn out like the 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 paranormal community has turned out you know like every it, it's it's a joke You've right. got Ghostbusters, right. Ghost Chasers, Ghost this, Ghost that. You know, they wear all these corny outfits, and it's like, oh my God, what what happened to to rational thinking? What happened to sincere investigative techniques? The Kardashians is what happened. Oh. I want to be famous for nothing, and they can put on a ghost hunting shirt and yeah. buy a K two and put a thing on Facebook, and they're off and running. And it's why you know I I sincerely really appreciate the efforts MUFON has put into training programs. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we don't, as everybody knows, every once in a while you'll get that investigator that just doesn't make the cut and they slip through the cracks yep. and we do handle them. But for, you know, 99.99999% 99 of the people they've been vetted and background checked and have had to have a certain amount of knowledge before we let them go to someone's house or investigate a UFO report. Yeah. No other field does that. And I believe that that's why um, we, we probably get, you know, better information and more scientific work done. Um, and part of that equation is also the fact that, you know, the UFO phenomena has things like physical evidence, trace evidence, uh, radar reports, documents mm -hmm. that we can track. Versus the paranormal community or even the Bigfoot. So, oh my gosh, yeah, you know, Bigfoot. There we go. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we've been doing it longer. Uh, there have been constituted, you know, efforts within the community. We've come together mm -hmm. as more or less one community instead of different. An example, another example of the unity would be I could be in France and say, you know, hey, I have a CE5, you know, with an AN1. And it doesn't matter if they're MUFON, not MUFON. That's the valet uh, classification. Right. They would know exactly what I was talking about. So we have our own language that's universal. And, you know, that's in a large part because of MUFON and, you know, just digging in there. Um, as an international investigator, a UFO investigator, are there any differences in the witnesses or the belief systems that are presented by specific regions outside of the scientific classifications that you just gave us? Yeah, it's it's so interesting uh, to work with, you know, Mexico and, mm -hmm. and the South American region because um, they kind of don't need us. They don't need the investigation. Most of the reports we're getting from them is they're adding to the database. They just want to let MUFON know. They want to report it and, and, and have it recorded somewhere but as an investigator, you know, we contact everyone we're assigned and and they're like, like, well, what do you mean come investigate? Of course, I just told you a UFO is there. Right. So their belief system is way more accepting. And, you know, for people to think that the mindset around the world is completely skeptical and people don't believe it, they're they're wrong. In fact, it's it's the more I work overseas, the more I realize when we come from a sophisticated or a scientifically advanced type of uh, society, such mm -hmm. as the United States or, you know, Europe, Germany, Russia, China, you know, these things may seem a little more odd. But when you have other countries that are focused on religion and family and, you know, that's the basis of their communities, that UFO, they just think it's silly. Why Why are you coming down here to look for UFOs? Don't you have them in the United States? <laughs> so, you know, it's just refreshing sometimes, you know, to get there. But also as an uh, international investigator, we have to be careful. Um, I'm also national director of Cuba. It's still communist. They still don't trust Americans. So for me to freely write some of the things I do mm – -hmm. You know, to some of the investigators down there, 
I could cause them so much grief. They could end up in a prison. Wow. You know, just because of the language or I say the wrong thing in an email or it's too cryptid. So we're trained very delicately and, and, and thoroughly on UN protocols and know the country. You, and, you, you see, Chase, nobody knows this out there outside of the MUFON. Like I said, I've been doing the show a number of years, and, and here you are, you and I are talking for the first time, and yeah. I am learning so much about MUFON. You know, it's, it's we have to do better talking about ourselves, I guess. Um, you know, no one, you know, I've been doing this since 1994. My very first, I still have my very first Buffon ID in 96, hand signed by Walt Andros. <laughs> my and of gosh. course, the ID, yeah, of course, the, the, you know, the ID came from a typewriter. You can clearly see that it's, it's just a riot. I still have it. But, um, you know, we have come such a long way in all of these considerations. Buffon is my biggest frustration with Buffon. It moves so slowly. But we have to because but, we are dealing with U.N. issues mm-hmm. and, you know, protecting witnesses and whistleblowers and confidentiality. And we're walking all these uh, legal parameters that the legalities that we didn't have even five years ago. The New Age genre is saying that there are multiple universes, there are multiple dimensions, and that what we call UFOs, are actually visitors from these other dimensions or these other universes. Uh, What is your take on that? Is it possible that there might be something to this? I am a believer in um, universes and Mm -hmm. multi-universes and a believer in the type of travel, you know, that sci-fi um, I was looking at my son's iWatch today where, you know, his iPhone is on this whole watch yeah. and, you know, he's doing all this. And and I even joked about when, you know, when I was a kid, Dick Tracy was talking into his watch and we thought that was the coolest thing. And here yeah. it is. And yet, you know, the Star Trek and, and some of these things about jump technology and, and you know, travel, inter, interplanetary travel, which we all know is our only hope for humanity. We have to become interplanetary species. But, yeah, I, I definitely believe in it so much that I, I continue to believe and strengthen that believe, belief in my work that science is going to be the disclosure we get. Um, somebody's going to make a discovery, right. and this time they can't cover it up because it is scientifically significant with all the things that we're doing in space right now. Is they it? Just... Po- I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Chase. No, that's okay. Is it I possible? Think there were too many eyes looking up. There are too many eyes on it now with private industry taking yeah. over NASA. It's craziness. Yeah. Is it possible that they are, and I'm talking, when I say they, those who you and the other MUFON members and members of the scientific community and all those who have an interest in the ET phenomenon, is it possible that they are already here and they are living amongst us? It is a um, very popular theory in ufology. Um, one, I haven't found enough evidence mm-hmm. that I'm convinced that I, you know, I would jump on board that. Um, however, I've seen some crazy stuff, Robin, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was true. Uh, however, um, I am still because my my forte out here as an investigator is forensics. Right. I go nowhere without my DNA kit. And this is a law enforcement DNA kit. The same thing if you were busted for drugs and didn't uh-huh. want that alcohol, you know, breathalyzer test, they're going to, you know, swab your cheek. Yeah. Um I carry it everywhere and when people tell me they're hybrid, I don't do it as a challenge like I'm going to prove them wrong. Mm-hmm. Um but I have a little over 300 DNA samples from the elongated skulls and star child skull and a lot of the other work I've done with the ancient Mm -hmm. um, type discoveries, but I'm still looking for DNA. So, you know, let's see if we can, you know, get this mapped into our DNA bank and let's start working on hybrid work if they are here and please come forward and tell your relatives like, dude, stop already. Yeah. Like, you know, we can handle the truth. <laughs> um, I understand that you've created a brand new investigation model in MUFON. Can you tell us a little bit about it? 
Yeah, the SAT team is now a level four tier team. And uh, being a four tier team, um, you start out as a MUFON tr uh, investigator trainee, and then you become a full investigator. And then you can qualify for the STAR team. And the next, uh, the next step up would be the special assignment team. And, you know, Jan and I had met in Laughlin at one of the conferences and, you know, he's telling me that he really needs a team. It was a small team just to handle the big stuff of people that can dig in, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, the forensics and, and work it like an engineer, work these cases like I, I would as an engineer. And I'm like, I can do that team. <laughs> like I, I even know the members I, I would most like kind of the dream team, but I kind of, went at Jan with this new model, like we're trying to think out of the box and recreate the wheel because, you know, a normal police department has, you know, the cops are out every day yeah. doing what needs to be done every day. But when something extraordinary happens in their area, they call in a task force. That's right. And that's specialties and everybody's working in a room. We're all throwing files on the table. We're working and collaborating together and not everyone in there is a street cop. You have forensics people and, you know, they, they all have their different specialties. And that's what we put together with the special assignment team is, you know, just a collection of people that all have they all bring something to the table mm -hmm. um, and we work it like a task force. That is great. You and I have to take our final break right now. Uh, Chase, thank you so much. Let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and give them MUFON's uh, information as well. Yeah, thank you so much for that opportunity. Um, MUFON.com. It's so easy, and we keep it that way. Um, but there's plenty to see on the page. Also um, on Facebook, Twitter, ChaseKlitzky.com. But TheFieldReports.com. Um, you, you can find me and Carrie there as well. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, stand by. You and I will be back in a couple of minutes as we wrap up this hour here in the XO from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. More with Chase on the other side of this break. Don't you dare go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back, everyone. Our guest this hour is Chase Kletsky, and uh, she is with MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. In November of 2016, Chase became a registered and official lobbyist for the UFO field. This goal was realized through a progressive understanding that to truly influence change and offer a knowledgeable commentary on the realities of the UFO phenomenon, we must include our nation's elected and the very people that are trusted as our lawmakers. 
Chase is the author of two very popular books, Admissible, the Field Investigator's Manual, with Richard Dolan, another good guest and friend here on the Exxon, and the first of its kind children book, Are Aliens Really Real? Both can be found on Amazon.com. Chase, first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here tonight. It's been a great pleasure and a delight finally meeting you. Rob, you are awesome. You're just rocking. I love this interview where I'm having a blast. Well, please don't be a stranger. We'd love to have you back at any time. Be great. Um, with with the experience you have, both inside and outside of MUFON, but having been an investigator and as an investigator for MUFON, what, in your opinion, is the most compelling case that if the UFO phenomena is real? Wow, that's an awesome question. You know, I, I can never forget about Travis Walton. Um, I, I, I love this case because he never reported himself as being on a UFO or an abductee. Never did. Yeah. It was all done for him when he came back. And that case is so thoroughly investigated. Lie detector test. It's, it's a great... Um, that was one of my favorite ones. I, I love the Zimbabwe with the children. Mm-hmm. And again, in, um, Australia, they also had, uh, Westall in 66, I believe it was, um, you know, school kids and there, there's, there's honestly so, so many, um, so many, I, I'm having a hard time thinking, but the first one that always comes to mind is Travis because, you know, of the amount of witnesses and the technology of, yes. um, you know, deception counter, mm-hmm. you know, devices and everything. I mean, that guy has been through a ringer. Yeah. And as much controversy that has happened with that group of loggers over the years, you know, they come together, mm-hmm. you know, they there's infighting. If any one of them had been lying or, per, you know, or, or perpetrated a hoax, they would have bagged each other out for 10 bucks years ago. That's right. And I think the most compelling part of the fire in the sky case, Travis Walton case, is Travis himself. He is a down-to-earth, very plain person. He doesn't have any airs. He, He just is Travis Walton, and credibility expounds with him. Right. And then there's Captain Solace, you know, with the nukes. And, yeah. you know, I could just go on and on. Uh, there are so many credible cases and information out there. And, of course, you know, the Internet's so polluted and littered. I, I don't mm. know how new people, you know, that have found this new passion for UFO information is ever going to find the the good stuff, which, again, is why I'm thankful that we have MUFON exactly. with that database. Yeah. But there's also Peter Davenport. Oh, yes. Now, he's been around a long time, and he is a great gentleman himself. And once again, you know, he he has a passion for finding the truth. Yes, and has offered that database as well. Um, In fact, you know, a lot of Mm -hmm. all of the MUFON investigators I know, we're always trying to corroborate, uh, you know, cases that are reported. And he's one of our most successful and reliable um, partners yes. in information. I, I just, you know, he's kind of an unsung hero. You know, MUFON is an organization and, you know, um, but Peter, boy, I'd love to see somebody give that man an award. You know, he does it from his heart. Exactly. He's by himself. Yeah. Uh, he's amazing. And he lives in a missile silo. He's, he's funny. He's, he's a riot. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, what is your opinion of the Roswell case? I like the Roswell case. Um, you know, the funniest thing that when people ask me about that, I, I the first thing I want to tell them is, guys, remember, our witnesses, none of them have changed their stories. But the government has three times. <laughs> so <laughs> as an investigator... Already my radar is on the government. (laughs) So I do believe it happened. And how about the Betty and Barney Hill case? Oh, my gosh. Um, What an amazing, powerful, courageous couple they were um, to come forward about their story and what happened to them in the early 60s as a biracial couple. Yes. I 
very few people, only people my age and older, because I'm old and grumpy, um, will understand what that was like back in the early 60s to be, you know, that couple yeah. and then to come out and tell a story like this. And 100 percent it happened. And I, my favorite thing is when she was vindicated mm -hmm. and um, many, many years later, remember uh, she was challenged with, you know, one of the skeptics. Well, draw a star map of where they told you they came from. And she did. And they used that against her for how many decades because it didn't exist. Oops. Until a few years ago when they discovered a star that was behind the other one that they couldn't see. And now she was dead on. That's you can't make this stuff up. This is just great evidence. No, but I would like to correct you on one thing. You said okay. that you're old and grumpy. Well, I just checked oh. <laughs> the dictionary here, and my picture is beside old and grumpy, so that <laughs> cannot funny. be you, young lady. Uh, we've got about uh, four minutes left, and what would you like to share with the Exxon Nation tonight? Really like to share that you know, by supporting radio shows and efforts, you know, like you and, and what you're doing over there and, um, you know, the products that we're putting out and bringing on the guests that, you know, have something to talk about is really a huge, huge service and something that needs to be um, kind of invested in. You know, people need to start investing in into this. Um, digital radio is taking over mm -hmm. terrestrial radio. Oh, I freaking love it. Yeah. And, you know, the content, you know, you're not going to hear this on Fox News. You're not going to hear this on any mainstream media, you know, but we're all in it together. And and if you want to be effective and important and do something bigger than yourself, you don't even have to be an investigator. Support one of our programs. Support, um, you know, somebody out there, even on Facebook, you know, just really – you know, buy a book. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody getting rich out here. Um, you know, my books, every penny goes right back into me getting back out in that field because I take money from no one. So, you know, when I'm off to Arizona or, you know, I just got back from two weeks, Utah and, Air and Arkansas, you know, it's just, this is what we do. So you, you don't have to be a hero as an investigator. You can be an, a hero um, supporting one or helping to research or to throw, you know, suggest a great guest for you. Yeah. Hey, ask this podcast. Yeah. We, we're all in it together, guys. Yeah, I've, I've got a theory uh, about anything that this applies to. As, as a former police investigator myself, I have always believed that the truth is out there. And when it comes to the, the UFO phenomena, I think that if we had all, I believe that everybody has a, a piece of the jigsaw puzzle in their pockets. And if mm -hmm. we could get everybody around a big table and get that little piece of a jigsaw puzzle, put it on the table and have everybody work on it, that this phenomenon would be solved. But I think just like in the early days of law enforcement, that everybody wants to have the smoking gun. And right. I think that if we all work together, shared the information, shared the intelligence, like MUFON is, is trying to get people to do, that this phenomenon will be solved much faster. I agree. I believe in confirmation and not disclosure. Exactly. Exactly. Chase, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, but before we say so long, you brought up an interesting point. What happens to UFO groups and investigators if, I'm, I'm going to say, when the alien UFO phenomenon becomes known? Oh, thank goodness, because we're just getting started. Um, at this point, there's so much more to do, uh, things to weigh in mm -hmm. on, um, things to calculate. And, and again, take everything we've done and stand on it and go to the next level. Complete understanding. Chase, one more time, give out your website and let people know how they can join MUFON or at least contact MUFON if they have had a sighting or an encounter. Yes, please report it to us and you can uh, visit MUFON by just hitting www.mufon.com and hit report a UFO 
um, you know, check out the site, stay a while, you know, check everything out. If you have any questions, contact me, contact a member, call the number, call the um, home office, you know, in Irvine, California, you know, they loved it. They love that. So that's what we're here for, um, to answer questions and, and help you through it. And, you know, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, you know, my webpage, um, wherever unknown things can be found. And of course, <laughs> Your books are available on Amazon.com. They are. Thank you. Chase, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Don't be a stranger, and uh, my congratulations on all the great work that you're doing, and my regards to everyone at MUFON. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. This. Thank you so much. Take care, Chase. Awesome. And Thanks, don't Rob. don't forget, you're not the grumpy old person <laughs> I am. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye, Chase. Exo Nation, we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue here in the Exo Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, if you'd like to find out the programming we have available for you, no matter where you are around this great big world of ours, www.xzbn.net. <laughs> 